Hey, what's happening guys? I hope you didn't mind me taking the weekend off. Sometimes you just gotta get the electronics out of the brain for a couple days to recharge and get things going. And uh, that's what I did. So we're back and today we are going to talk about voltage controlled oscillators, VCXOs. You're going to find them in a lot of circuits. So first of all, what are they used for? Well, they are used in frequency modulation, phase modulation, and electronic music such as synthesizers. And there are a couple of different types. We have harmonic, and we also have relaxation oscillators. Harmonic oscillators are generally going to produce a sine type wave and relaxation oscillators are going to produce a saw wave or uh, even a triangle wave depending. What we're going to create though is going to be more of a square wave os oscillator. Pardon the cough. <laughs> anyway, we're going to create basically a square wave type oscillator and we're going to use one of our favorite old chips. I got the circuit up here. We'll talk about it in a minute. So uh, basically, what's the definition of a voltage-controlled oscillator? It is an oscillator whose frequency is controlled by the input of voltage. Voltage goes up, frequency changes. Voltage goes down, frequency changes. That's the basic idea of it. It can get an incredibly amount more complicated. For instance, if you're interested in the math of it, it goes a little something like this. The frequency at a given time is equal to the quiescent frequency of the oscillator plus the sensitivity of the oscillator minus the voltage input at that particular point in time and the phase at that particular point in time is equal to, let me if I can draw my Google right, <laughs> of the frequency at time dr. Um, don't want to get into the calculus today. If you guys want to get into the calculus of it, let me know. We'll dig into that further in another video. Today's just going to be more of a setup. And we will also, if we get into the calculus, we'll talk about something called a Laplace transform. which is something we haven't talked about here before but it goes a little something like this frequency at s equals k of the oscillator times v in s and of course the phase second equals frequency seconds over seconds and like i said if you want to get into the math we'll get into that but not today so today Let's create our own simple voltage controlled oscillator using a chip that if you're a fan of my channel, I know you're very familiar with. It is our old friend, the 555 timer. The 555 timer is absolutely everywhere you look. If there is an electronic device within reach of you, chances are there's a 555 timer in it. So, pin 8 is our VCC, obviously. Pin 1 is our ground. So now we have our basic power put to it. Okay? Let's go over what the pins are. I guess we should start with that. Pin 2 is our trigger pin. And it's active low. So when the voltage drops to below one third of the supply voltage, which in our case is going to be nine volts, then pin two is going to go active, active low. And when it goes active low, pin three, which is our output, is going to go active high. So we are going to take our trigger pin and tie it to ground as well. But wait, because there's more. And then we also have our output, 
which is just going to go over here to our frequency. Now, pin four is our reset pin. It is also active low. So we don't want it to be active. We're gonna tie it also to VCC. Pin five is gonna be our interesting pin. This is our control voltage pin. And what we're gonna to do to this pin, you're gonna like this, I, I think. Maybe you want, what do I know, right? We're gonna tie it to a potentiometer that is also going to nine volt and going to ground. Just like that. So this is how we'll be able to vary our voltage for our VCO. Now, pin six is our threshold pin. Okay, that's kind of our off pin as opposed to pin two, our trigger pin. So when pin six goes above two thirds of our supply voltage, our output pin goes low. And we're gonna tie that to a resistor. In this case, it will be 33K. And we will bring it over here. And we will also tie that to pin two. Now we're just gonna take a capacitor here to smooth this out. We'll use, oh, I don't know, 100 nanofarad, I think is what I put in there. And we're also going to put a capacitor here. And that is going to be part of our timing circuit. This is an RC circuit, so that's RC and that's our R. All right, so there's everything of our circuit, and here is our circuit hooked up. Let's zoom in, and uh, we'll take a good look at it. So there's our 555 timer, pin eight tied to VCC, pin one tied to ground. Uh, we're gonna use a nine volt battery. Pin two goes to pin six. Pin six is also, is it pin six? Yeah, pin six also going, did I do that right? Yeah, just a little capacitor tying it to ground there. Pin five goes to our potentiometer, which doesn't want to stick in the breadboard, which goes to VCC and ground. We have another pin here, or another capacitor here. This is our timing capacitor on pin two. Pin three is our output, which in this case, we are hooked up to a scope probe. So there's everything in our circuit. Our trusty nine volt ever ready battery, which we hope is ever ready, right? And we'll take a look up at the oscilloscope, this is my new O1 XDS 2102A, a 12-bit oscilloscope. Very nice. And you can see our frequency is 123.8 hertz. Now I'll grab a uh, my pen here, or screwdriver rather, and we'll put that in here and as I turn you can see oops, you don't want too far we can change our frequency you see the frequency changing there we can go up to what or down to a little too low about a hundred and four Hertz at the low point and our high point is going to be about 337 hertz. So that's our range. We have about a 200 hertz range there. If you want to change the range, you can change the resistor. In this case, it's a 33K resistor. Or you can change this little capacitor here. Let me see if I've got capacitors floating around here. I usually do. Hold on one second. I found a 2.2 microfarad. Let's see if we take this one out. 
and put this one in. Let me uh, just get those more even so they'll fit in the breadboard a little better. Then we can power our circuit back up. And now look at the change in the frequency. Doesn't even look like we're getting enough frequency to really read it. What are we getting here? Okay. 7.8 hertz. Right there in the middle. Not too low. We're down to four. How high can we take it up to? 15. Ooh. About 16. That 2.2 is just, I mean, that's just a little too big. But I wanted to show you the effects of changing that capacitor. So, there is a little bit of an intro. <laughs> into voltage controlled oscillators. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. I love making videos for you guys. I love reading most of your comments. Unless you're being an asshole, in which case I really don't like to read them. But all opinions are welcome and considered. So, thanks for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.